Hello, hello. How's everybody doing? Got my got my little microphone today. I got my my uh, my camera, and uh, I got a glass of wine over here. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna try to see if I can do this YouTube thing. Oh, and I got, I got the late but great Muhammad Ali. You got to see the whole shirt. Just can't. The late but great Muhammad Ali. Cassius Clay himself. Got a microphone. Y'all can't see it. I, you know, I don't. I, I hope you can hear me. Um, I don't have a haircut. Don't. I'm not shaved. But I wanted to come on just to uh, talk to y'all a little bit um, about what my plans are going forward. Um, and this is this is all complete. I have my books in the background so you can see them. I know people are getting tired of me mentioning. Well, nobody said anything about it, so I can't say that. Um, but I do have my books behind me. Uh, and my, this is my great grandmother right here. A great, ah, uh, great grandmother. Her name was Martha Moore. Uh, she was 93 years old when she passed away. Um, I was in Germany. I was in Germany at a place called uh, Grafenbuehr, Germany. And uh, she passed away and I didn't know it. You know, when you come from a certain family, I don't want to, I'm not talking bad about my family, but nobody called me, you know, nobody called me. Nobody thought to send a Red Cross message. It was, it was a little, um, I was a little bit, I was a little bit pissed off about the whole thing. Um, but you know, I didn't get to go to a funeral. I didn't even know she passed away until I called, I called home one day. And you know, if I didn't call home every day, I would miss a lot of information. I, I called home. And um, I found out she passed away. And she, I was 20 years old. She was 93. Um, Friday, no, Thursday night. Thursday night, I'm laying on the couch. And uh, I laid on the couch because I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep in the bed. And I said, you know what, I'm just going to go on the couch and go to sleep. And uh, I had a, I had some crazy dreams. I had some crazy dreams last night as well. I think it's because of this wine. I've been drinking this wine lately. And when I go to sleep, I have the craziest dreams. Red wine. It's, it's some pretty good wine. You can get this at Sam's Club. It's called Josh. And I think it's the number two best wine at Sam's. I couldn't find a number one. But anyways, I was laying on the couch and I had this, it wasn't, it wasn't really a dream. It was more like a, um, a voice actually came to me, a voice and started reciting a poem. And whenever I get a poem like that or a story idea, I wake up and I put it in my phone immediately. And so that's that's what I did. Um, I, I did. I could not get the poem word for word, and I didn't get a chance to work on the poem. But I said today I'm gonna once I get this camera set up and this microphone, I'm going to uh, recite this poem, and I'm gonna tell you exactly where the poem came from. This is the microphone, by the way. I got all this from Best Buy today. I got a. I bought a brand new computer. Brand new microphone, brand new camera. Hey, it's not the best stuff, but you know, I got it all for five hundred six dollars. I said I'm gonna try this YouTube thing. If Kwame can do it, I can do it. So that's what I'm doing. I don't even know if I got the microphone right. No, I didn't have it right at all. Thing. That's. Let me stop playing with this thing. I'm probably making a lot of noise right now. I'm sorry. I 
said if Kwame can do this YouTube thing, I can. This guy, that brother has really motivated me uh, in a lot of ways than one, more ways than one. Uh, but I'm going to read the poem. Please bear with me. I, I This is my first time reading this poem out loud. I don't have a title for the poem. And this is the poem in the rough draft because this is Ms. Maya Angelou. I have her, I have one of her poems on my wall over there. And um, every now and then I'll go ahead and look at that and read it. But this poem is, um, it's called, well, I don't have a name for it. It's, I'm just going to read the poem. And if you can imagine this being read in my Angelou's voice, that's the voice I heard when the poem came to me. So I'm going to try to imitate her voice a little bit. You know what? Before I read this poem, I'm going to light a, uh, I'm gonna light a little Palo Santos and let that burn. Oh, boy. Just give me one second. It's, this has been the longest week I've had in a long time. I'm talking a long time. As far as work goes, I had all kind of stuff going on at work. Just one thing after another. And I keep calling this Palo Santo, but it's, I meant Palo Santos, but this is Palo Santo. And it's P, P A L, it's two words P A L O S A N T O. You guys want to look it up? And I've been receiving so much love from subscribers. I said I'm gonna go and buy a camera and see if I can set this thing up. My son actually helped me. My 14 year old son had to help me set the camera and microphone up because uh, my brain is fried. I, I work has really just fried my brain, you know. So, I'm going to try to set the mood a little bit before I put this, before I read this poem. I don't even know if you guys can hear me good. This is not, this, I didn't do any kind of test run. And um, it took me forever to get the microphone and camera set up the right way. But this is all of a, this is all a test. I don't know if it's going to, I don't know how this is going to work out. I'm hoping for the best. If you guys want to go ahead and have y'all a little sip, go ahead. And, you know, if you got a little wine, a little cognac, you know, I'm having a little sip. I don't drink a lot anymore. I used to be a very, 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 I used to be a drunk. I used, I used to be a drunk. I'm not even going to lie. Ask any of my family members. I used to be a drunk. But nowadays I sip on wine. I might have a beer every now and then. I got my Hennessy bottles up there. But I don't drink any. I don't I don't drink like I used to. I can't. <laughs> I cannot. It's it's not good. Oh man, I wanted to actually put on some music, but uh some copyright issues with that. I decided to put my books up because for obvious reasons, I want people to see the books. You know, this is my daughter right here in this picture. I hope she don't get mad because I put her in the picture she won't. Okay, so this is a poem that came to me Thursday around 325 is when I woke up in the morning. I'm reading this for the first time out loud, so I may have to start over a couple times. Tend to your pot, gal. Tend to your meat. I can be a poor child, but can you tend to your meat? You up on a pole, child. 
while your poor child stomping his feet. I can be a poor child, but can you tend to your meat? Got beans on while you stamping your feet. Tend to your poor child and quit stamping your feet. Got pots on while you stamping your feet. I can be a poor child, but can you tend to your meat? Yeah, this is my first time reading this poem out loud. I'm going to read it one more time because I can hear a voice when I read it. And um, I want to revise it. I want to do some editing to it. But And this is not the first time my Angelou has come to me with like you know, a voice. I actually her, her voice. I can hear it as clear as day. And um, one time before I was in my office just writing and all of a sudden I'm like, whoa, what was that? It's like a whisper. So, uh, and you know, my Angela has a very distinct voice. But anyway, I'm going to read it one more time. Tend to your pot, gal. Tend to your meat. I can be a poor child, but can you tend to your meat? You up on a pole, child. While your poor child stomping his feet. I can be a poor child, but can you tend to your meat? Got beans on while you stomping your feet. Tend to your poor child and quit stomping your feet. Got pots on while you stomping your feet. I can be a poor child, but can you tend to your meat? I don't even, I kind of get the gist of the poem. It sounds like, I don't know. It sounds like, um, you know, you got a lot of things going on with uh, the whole um, sexualization, the sexual freedom movement. That, you know, you just got stripper pole uh, classes. Um, we live in a very sexualized world nowadays, and uh, my kids are watching these things. You know, and I think that's probably where the poem came from. I don't know. A lot, you know, and that that night, that particular night, I actually I remember going to sleep thinking, oh, you know, sometimes I have the craziest dreams, and I was thinking, let me have some kind of send me something tonight, send me something, you know, just talking to God, just asking Him to send me something, and and, and my Angelou came, she came through, you know, um, so it was. It was a magical moment when I woke up. A lot of sometimes I'm so tired and sleepy I don't want to wake up and write a poem, you know. But I had to do that one because I heard a voice as clear as day. Yeah. Um, and I might just put her name in the title. I just for some reason I put that in the title. Yeah. Um. This, these past couple of days, these, this past week, uh, it's been a lot of uh, stress, but sometimes stress brings about certain things. You know, I remember being stressed out and having some of the most spiritual things happen in my life. So stress is, is necessary. Everything is necessary. You know, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I know, with this new microphone, I know you can hear that pretty good. Um, but yeah, it's been about almost 14 minutes. I'm going I'm to call it quits. I don't have much to say today. Saturday, I, I laid down for a good while this morning before I went out to Best Buy and, uh, just a lot of thoughts going on in my head. I didn't write it all today. Uh, I did not write it all, but Sometimes I need a break. Today I needed a break. Um, I got to prepare for next week. I'm going to be in Myrtle Beach in uh, Georgetown doing some installs. And uh, that could be kind of stressful, but hey, it's life. I'm going to have some help. So, um, yeah, that's it. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this video up and uh, hope you guys enjoying the poem. If, you, if anybody has a suggestion for the poem, just go ahead and put it in the comment. Um, and a lot of times, I when I do these videos, 
as soon as I'm done with the video, I think of something and I'm like, man, I should have said that when I was on the video. But, um, yeah. Yeah, if anybody has any suggestions for that poem, let me know. And I'm going to, I think I may revise it. If you think I should revise it, make it a little bit better. Uh, let me know. If not, uh, tell me. It was a very simple poem, but if you could hear, I, you know, I could, as I was reading it, I could hear a voice. Um, and, you know, to be honest with you, I was, I was one of those guys, you know, I, I'm, I still struggle with, uh, being a male chauvinist. I admit that I'm sort of chauvinistic or I'm sort of, uh, a kind of, uh, when Maya Angelou was alive and well and breathing, I, I, you know, I would see her and I'm like, oh, you know, she's not all that, you know. And then I read her book, uh, Why the Cage Bird Sings, or I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings. And I'm like, this lady, she's been through some things. She's been through a lot of stuff. But still, I did not give her the respect that she deserved while she was alive. And like I said, she came to me one day and I heard a voice and I'm like, and this was, she was somebody very special, but I didn't, I didn't see it when she was alive. And I, I wrestled with that. Um, same thing with Tupac. See, I'm, I'm, I'm at that age when, see, I'm, I'm, and I'm not scared to admit when Tupac was alive, a lot of people on the, on the East coast, a lot of, um, hip hop. Uh, young people didn't like Tupac a lot of them I was one who was conflicted I, I I did not know how to handle Tupac because he was so in your face he was so just always in trouble always loud mouth spitting on the camera you know all these things all the time and then on the top it all off he was dissing the East Coast when, it, when he was born in Harlem, New York. So when Tupac died, I was in, I was in Aberdeen, Maryland, going through AIT in the army. And when he died, I took a trip all the way to New York just to see my cousin, just to brag about Tupac dying. And I'm not ashamed to say that. I'm not ashamed to say that. One thing that happened though, when I got to Harlem, I saw my cousin, my cousin Maurice. Shout out Maurice. He's younger than me. Maurice is younger than me. I'm, I'm, I was, uh, I was 19 at the time. Maurice was about 17, 18, and I'm uh, here. I am, just completely disrespecting the guy who just died. And my cousin Maurice looked me dead in my eye. He said, he said, "What are you talking about, man? We lost one of the greatest prophets." that we'll ever know. And I thought about it and I said, well, I said, what do you mean? He said, Tupac, man, Tupac was, he was somebody special, man. And um, so after, after he said that, something registered in my head because I had his music. I had his music. I would listen to his music. I, you know, it, like I said, it was, it was a, it was like conflicting feelings toward the guy because he was a great rapper, a great MC. He stood for something, but at the same time, he was like one of the biggest troublemakers. And, and I blamed him for the whole East Coast, West Coast. Well, I blame him and I blame Puffy for the whole East Coast, West Coast beef that was going on. And so many people died over and all those, so much stuff. So I was blaming Tupac for that. And I was, mostly mad at Tupac because he was um, he had so much potential and I wanted to see him I wanted to see him grow up I wanted to see him make it to to be 30 some years old 40 some years old you know but and plus I was immature I was 19 years old when he died Tupac was 24 I think he was so I'm not ashamed to say that, you know, a lot of people are, if, you know, you hear people now, oh, Tupac, Tupac, but when Tupac was alive and breathing and well, 
people on the East Coast, a lot of people was not messing with him. You know, or they wasn't rocking with him 100%. You know, I'm not afraid to say that, but, you know, now, now that he's gone and when he died and I realized by talking to my cousin what we had lost, um, his music sounded different to me. It sounded different, you know. But yeah, that's that's all I got for tonight. Um, I'm gonna go and uh, probably go take a shower and watch some TV, finish my wine, and uh, that's it. I'm good. Y'all have a wonderful night. Tell me what you think about the poem. Oh, and if you liking this content, hit that like button, subscribe. If you are a reader, these are my books. These books, as you can see, they're not 20 page books. This Mac is about 400 pages. Uh, Jaja is about 300 and some pages. And Save Miss Caroline is around 300 and some pages. And I couldn't find a poetry book to put up here, but I also have a poetry book. If you guys are readers, if you want to see, if you want to see what good African-American fiction looks like and sounds like, these are your books. Um, I'll talk to y'all later. Y'all have a good night. Have a blessed, blessed night. Be blessed.